All right, guys, we have a train gas back here. And I'll tell you one thing. If she works as good as she smells, she ain't working too good. Because it sounds like we're not burning too well through this uh, flu. We'll check things out. But uh, so far, not too good. I wish we had smell vision Because we look inside that flu there, it smells pretty bad. And as you see, there's the high limit and the jumper so that the high limit will be bypassed. That's a good thing to do if you long for death. So, we'll see what's going on. We'll test the high limit with the ohm meter while she's running to see when it trips out and we can shut things down. All right guys, we got my patented SOX3 mounting bracket, AKA the Crescent Ridge on there. Now we're about to start it up. I have the limit jumped out, but the limit's kind of been destroyed. It's rusted and falling apart. So I really don't think I'm getting a really good reading on that. It's 5.95 kilo ohms. And then we have our gas pressure here. As you see here, it says LP gas. Over here, it says natural. Uh, so natural on the line and LP on the line. So we're going to see which one's actually correct and what's going on here. Hi <laughs> right, guys, we've been running for a few minutes again. Gas pressure looks fine for LP. We have 13 percent oxygen. We actually went all the way down to 11. The blower kicked on. We came up to 13. So we will be checking the heat exchanger to see if any air is getting in that way. 148% excess air is definitely excessive. Our lemon switch hasn't tripped off, but it's not really a good way to measure it. It's, it's in rough shape. I'm not sure I'm making really good contact with it. I tried to get it on there as best I could, but it's too difficult. So, we had trouble lighting, as you see. Uh, so we'll check the burners to what condition they're in and the amount of rust dripping down below them. Um, I guess they're in bad condition. We're going to let it run for a few more minutes and I'll shut it off and check the burners. All right, guys, we're looking down in there, and you can see it looks pretty bad. So we need to take those burners off and look down inside of there. So there's a bunch of debris and junk piled in each one of those tubes. I would be very surprised if this heat exchanger doesn't have a crack in it. All right, guys, we've removed one of the burners. Let's see what it looks like. It's a middle burner. See the bottom? Oh, that's pretty. Ugly. Pretty. There's a burner there. A lot of times it gets plugged up in this area here. A lot of rust and debris in there. I'm not able to light all the burners. Uh, there's some debris in there. It doesn't look totally plugged, but definitely not good. I'm going to take the other two off and uh, take a look at those as well. After seeing the burners and the amount of debris in the tubes here, and it's the general smell and condition of everything, I'm going to go ahead and take the top off and take a look at the heat exchanger. See if we have any obvious problems with that. Um, definitely needs a good cleaning, for sure. I'm sure it's never been cleaned, but we'll see what the heat exchanger looks like. See what we do from there. All right, guys, we have the heat exchanger exposed. Of course, there's our where our gas controls are right there. Integrated furnace board. Some of our other controls. There's our blower. You take this outer band off, and everything slides out. Even the wheel. That's how you change those. It's our evaporator. Of course, our train compressor. So let's take a look at the heat exchanger, and I can show you all some bad stuff. Here's number one down here. There's our first hole right there. First thing you see when you take it off, or rather, not a huge hole, but that's pretty big. So definitely bad news. All right, guys, I'm all done inspecting the heat exchanger. I couldn't get to the very bottom reaches, but I'm, again, not very concerned about it. I was mostly looking for more holes just to show you guys. Uh, I found one hole and another one hole this tube here another one on a tube right over here it's not quite it's actually it's not quite a hole it's just you can tell it's about to poke through uh, which is essentially a non-issue since we have our first hole the heat exchanger needs to come out but with the outdoor coil looking the way it does being so close to the beach it's really a should be the end of this unit we'll wait and see 
you never know what people are going to do so all right guys we're about to leave the house i had to crack heat exchanger one thing you definitely want to do if you run into a situation like that is turn the gas off to the unit turn the power off whatever you got to do let them know that it's not safe to run and don't ever leave that thing running uh if they want to kill themselves they can but it shouldn't be any part of us doing it so i, I called him told him what the situation was and um, told him I couldn't do it. So it's a free country, but it won't be me that's killing everybody in the house. So I suggest a lot of caution dealing with that sort of thing, even when they're pretty angry about it, which sometimes happens.